So guess who was demonetized? That would be me. And uh, I have to say I'm not overly disappointed that YouTube has just demonetized me. In all honesty, um, I hadn't produced any new content in four years, so I'm surprised it took this long. But anywho, uh, regardless, um, here I am. So now that I'm demonetized, I have no reason not to have a shit ton of fun and make whatever video I want now. So yes, today's beverage, since I didn't do this last time because I was going to be all serious about this and stuff. Strongbow! Yes, everybody loves a good Strongbow. Gotta say, the dark fruit is super fucking tasty. I might leave that in because I've been demonetized, so it doesn't matter. I'm not going to lose anything. Okay, once again, I'm going to leave a timestamp here for anybody who doesn't want to uh, watch me blib blab I'll re-edit this so this goes back to the beginning so I'm doing an 80s thing with hair today I don't know if you were on my Instagram but I, I showed you what it looked like when I was doing it mm, was looking kind of like a thing but anyway that's that's what that is anyway all right so today we are actually gonna make a pattern that I designed back when COVID first struck and I know a dishcloth isn't very glamorous when you're starting out and you're like, I want to make really pretty sweaters and I want to do like mitts and stuff and maybe I want to knit socks. But you have to start somewhere. If you don't know the basics, you definitely need to know what you're doing as far as starting out. This is a great knitting pattern for anybody who is just starting to learn how to knit. Uh, very basic stitches. If you know how to knit, purl, cast on, cast off, you are golden. I'm going to show you how to do every single thing when it comes to this pattern from casting on to knitting to purling to casting off and working in the ends. So you can make this from start to finish and never have to go anywhere else to see what you're doing. And for those who want to download the pattern, you can download it here. Yes, I actually know what transitions I have. So I'm going to use the hell out of that little sparkly one that came with the computer because that's awesome. So yeah, did you see it? Did it work? I don't know. Okay. And for the record, I am going to put that QR code in here too. So here it is. How was that? Huh? And if you also want to download the pattern, if you just do that QR code over here, then if you just go like say you're watching this on your television or whatever because you have a smart TV and you're awesome, you can just seriously just do that with your phone. It's going to take you right to the pattern because yes, I am that technologically advanced. And if you want to download it the old fashioned way because you're already on your phone or your tablet, then you can hit this button right here, kaploop, nah. and that little thing that just slid over, meh, just like that, you can get the pattern there. It'll hook up right to my website because apparently my website has been verified by YouTube, which makes me official. I'm going to say all of my stuff because I put all my, hey, follow me on social media, always at the end of my videos and I know nobody ever follows me. So either you're not watching to the end of my videos, which I suspect you aren't. Remember, sweet, sweet video hours. I need the watch hours to make this monetized again. So you need to help me help you help me help you help me help you. So yeah, because if they're, I'm not going to get paid for the videos and it, it, if it doesn't drive traffic to my website, then why am I doing this? I am literally in a room by myself talking to a camera like a crazy person. Oh, the social media stuff. Okay, I am going to use the shit out of this uh, sparkly transition that came with the iMovie thing on my computer. So if you would like to follow me, I'm on Janice as in Joplin on Instagram. <laughs> I'm also uh, known as Janice the Knitter on my Facebook page. Oh, I just love that. Ooh, did you feel it? I felt the tingle on that one. Uh, what else am I? I'm on Twitter. I don't know really use Twitter. I don't know if you noticed. I don't really enjoy social media much. Twitter. Um, yeah, I hardly ever post on there, so that's what that is. Anyway. All right. Things that we are going to need. I forgot to take the wrapper off this. I do not get sponsored by anybody, so nobody gets anything from me. You want me to say, hey, your yarn's awesome? Give me a, give me a dingle. Hey, you know, I got an email on my uh, account there that you can do. So what you're going to need, need this back. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I am not, never said I was professional. Okay, uh, what you're going to need is uh, some cotton yarn. 
not speaking of any particular maker. You need 100% cotton yarn for this. It's a worsted weight, uh, number four. I'm not sure what the UK equivalent to that is. Something sort of pinai, but I'm not sure. I'm going to enter that here. It's whatever ply I just said. Um, so you're gonna need a ball of yarn. They're smaller balls, they're like this sized. Uh, that is, I'm going to tell you how many grams that is. That's 50 grams, or for my American folk, that is one and three quarter ounces. Okay, now we really don't need this. There you go. Okay, you're going to need size eight US knitting needles for this. Uh, that is a five millimeter needle for all of us Canadian, UK, uh, you know, metric folk, because base 10 is way better than whatever the fuck inches and feet do. I don't know, it's base 10, it's maths. Okay, so I'm gonna use these fours, but don't use fours. You don't need fours, it's just ridiculous. That you don't need to make it, it's gonna make it smaller and weirder, but my my size five knitting needles are indisposed right now. I'm actually, once again, I'm doing an order and I am making slippers for a customer, so I'm like halfway done. You also need a tapestry needle. Um, it's like a big needle that has a larger head that the yarn will fit through so you can work in the ends. So I'm just going by memory. I think I need to cast on 39. And I am going to show you how to cast on the stitches very, very slowly close up. just winked at me. I think he has plans. Do you have plans? No? Okay. We're going to work on rows one to six and rows one to six are super simple. All they are is knit. So all you're going to do is just knit across back and forth six times.
so that's what your six rows look like. I'm holding it up even though I'm going to show you what it looks like up close. Okay, moving along. Okay, row seven. So we are going to knit four, curl one. So this knit four on the edge is what's going to keep it from curling. Whenever you see that, you know it's going to lay flat. stitches purl a stitch and knit four stitches and you do that however many times it says in the pattern whenever you see anything that's in brackets you're going to repeat those over and over again So when you finish your last repeat, so I did my purl, then you're just going to knit those last four stitches. Done. You are now done row seven. Look at you being like the beast that you are. Moving on to row eight. Mm, hello. And what's up? I haven't snoozes. How's things? Life treating you well? You match my couch. He matches my couch. That's actually kind of cool. Okay. Fluffers. He's the fluff. He has many nicknames. If I like you, you have a nickname. So that's kind of how that works. So for row eight, you're going to knit five. Five. Then you're going to purl four. It now is you're going to purl four and knit one and you're just going to do that all the way down the line very repetitive and that's why it is such a good pattern for beginners because this is great to learn all your basic stitches and then you are going to repeat from my little XEX -X mark XEX -X mark and that when you see that when you're knitting a pattern you just knit everything that is in between those two symbols so now we're gonna do row seven again
So then we're going to do row eight again. So you're going to knit five. And then you're going to purl in all the purl stitches and knit in all the knit stitches. So you do row seven, which we already know is fairly simple to do. You're gonna knit your four and purl your one and then knit in all the knit stitches. So knit four, purl one. Knit four, purl one. So next row is we just knit straight across. So you're gonna knit every single stitch. Row seven, okay, so the little fancy whatever that thing is that I decided to use as a marker, you're gonna to wanna to do that five more times. So you're going to have a total of six of these when you're all said and done. If you're new at knitting and you haven't figured this out yet, um, always have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil handy. Uh, when you need to do repeats, it's sometimes really easy to get confused on where you are and how many things, how many rows you need to do. If that happens, um, 
it's just easy to mark down like with a little tick or whatever I am on row whatever so like with this one you need to do the repeats however many times so what I would do I would have marked down two ticks for the ones that I had just done row seven and eight now I'm doing row seven again so I'm gonna put a little tick on my little piece of paper tick, and then I'm going to do row eight again and as you get better at doing things and you get more familiar with what stitch patterns look like, you won't need to mark down what row you're on anymore. It'll just be, oh, you just count and you're like, okay, that's where I am. Um, if you're new though, you don't know what you're looking for. So how do you know what you don't know? All right, and so now that I'm at the end of row eight again, I put another little tick on my paper and that would let me know that I only have two more rows to do. You know what? Okay, I'm done with this. I am not gonna do this in front of the camera because nobody wants to watch me do this over and over again. You already know how to do the rows. So I am going to complete this lovely little article and I am gonna go on Amazon and I'm gonna watch me some Preacher. Sorry, Rihanna, I know we said we were saving it and we were gonna watch it together. <laughs> do that. Oh, sorry. Fuck, I love that show, by the way. Oh my God, so fucking funny. Okay, I'm turning you off. bendy down thing. What the hell happened to my phone? What happened to my phone, cat? Do I live in the bathroom? That's totally a thing I would do. Douchebag cat on my phone. Look at that. I was looking for it. I'm like, where's my phone? Cat. I had great intentions on making this whole thing. But in all honesty, I got other shit I want to do today. So I am not going to knit this whole dishcloth. That's how much initiative I had. And then you're just going to knit across four times. off row so you're gonna have six of these little chunks so you're instead of just two you're gonna have four more of those and it's gonna be square yes you are um, I am lazy and I would rather do other things like watch bad 80s videos like flock of seagulls and things like that and continue with the afternoon drinking just saying I haven't done this in a while so bear with me casting off is actually really really simple and it is a quick and easy way to finish off whatever you're making and gives it a nice edge. You want to keep your tension fairly steady at this point. Knit the first two stitches. Take that first stitch and pass it over the next stitch. So you still have one stitch on your working needle. You knit the next stitch. Pass that first stitch over again. Knit the next stitch. Pick it up with your non-working needle. Pass it over. Knit the next stitch. Pick up the stitch. Pass it over. And you keep doing that down the whole row of stitches.
You want to keep your tension fairly even when you're doing this. Make your loops very consistent. They don't have to be super loose. They don't have to be super tight. Um, squeaking is too tight. Don't do that. Just keep passing it over and passing it over all the way down the length of your knitting. Okay, so we're almost at the end of the row. Still knitting and passing the stitch over. If I was smart, I would have grabbed my scissors when I was over there, but I'm just gonna rip this. So delicately cut it and then just pull it through the end through your loop and then you are finished. Ta-da! Okay, like I said before, it's gonna look a lot different than this for you because you're gonna have uh, four more of the squares than I do. I, being lazy, and quite frankly, I just don't want to do this anymore. Cause... Anyway, so yours is going to look like this, but longer. I'm going to insert a photo of a finished product here. This ship has sailed. I am done. So thank you for coming. Hope that this helped you and you are now officially a knitter that you can knit this. I have a whole lot of other videos that you can watch that you probably will be able to do now that you can do this. Um, I have a slipper video, which is always awesome. Uh, I recently just did an owl uh, mitten tutorial that shows you how to knit in the round. I literally show you every single stitch of every single round with that video and you will be able to knit in the round if you want to do that. But that's, you know, try some of my slipper patterns first, see what's going on there. Don't forget to like and subscribe because apparently I need to tell you that. But in all honesty, um, from what I know, it isn't about the likes and subscribes. It's all about the watch time. So if you want to do me a solid, watch to the end of this video. I'm sorry. Cheers. Have a great day.